Yeah, g'day YouTubers, Tinkero Tool again here with another sharpening video. Oh, I can hear everyone say, oh, not another sharpening video. Well, yep, this one's a little bit different, but had a few people ask me questions, friends and people in the know, and they say, one thing I hate about chainsaw grinders, there's a few things they hate, <laughs> but one of the things that they hate is they say that, oh, look, I'm not happy with my chainsaw grinder. It grinds too much off the right or it grinds too much off the left. I've never found that to be the case. I've found that the biggest error is actually in the chainsaw chain itself. And I've seen variations, and I've measured it today, of up to 0.2 of a millimetre variation in length. So, yeah, okay. We'll talk about that while we've got an error. They punch these teeth out, they're cut flat, they're punched out flat, then they put them in another machine and they're folded over and that's where the top plate folds over. So they're all punched out and at the back of the tooth, it's all deformed a little bit. It's not so bad down the bottom, but especially when you're getting up the top in this region here, it's all deformed. Have a look at the top left-hand picture. That's a picture of an Oregon full chisel. It's not too bad down the bottom, but you can see that there's uh, deformed a little bit up the top. And that's one of the reasons if you're using a caliper to measure the teeth, you're wasting your time, unless you put the caliper down the bottom, which will be on a slight angle. So not the best way of measuring something, but you can see that if we put the still one up, it's even worse. So how can you measure properly like that? Well, in actual fact, you can't. You can try, but you'll, it'll be all over the place. You can measure between the raker and the top of the tooth, but with a normal uh, caliper, very, very difficult. So what I did, and just I thought, well, what if the... Uh, Tolerance is better between the raker and the tooth. So I got a piece of metal and I was mucking around for a while. And you can see that that doesn't fit almost, but doesn't go down to the gullet. Whereas this one goes down to the gullet. So that's the difference. So obviously there's a variation there. So therefore... It comes down to, you really can't get a accurate figure because of the back, measuring at the back here, is deformed quite a lot. And you're going to find out that when you measure at the back, it's uh, really bad. So the only way that you can really measure properly and it's not really a good way of doing it is hold the vernier on a slight angle and we can sort of demonstrate that but it's it's really not the best way to do it one of the ways that i solved that problem on the oregon type grinder is that i made this backstop with a point and this backstop went right in here where the drive link, behind the drive link. Because the drive links are stamped out and they're much more accurate than the back of the tooth because the back of the tooth is rough. So that actually worked quite well and gives good accurate results. So if you want to take the time to measure the tooth and you want to try and find out that there is another way that when you bring this grinding wheel down and you set this up, you can use the grinding wheel as your gauge and find your shortest tooth if you want to spend a little. Now, especially on a brand new chain. So I'm talking about a brand new chain because chains aren't cheap. In Australia, you're going to be paying about 50, 55 bucks for a 20 inch uh, still or Oregon's a bit cheaper. So let's just say that you set this up like this. You bring your grinding wheel down. And as you can see, it's not touching. Okay. 
So then we'll go to our next tooth. You can just spend a, a tap. So that's, that's a high tooth. That means that tooth is longer. Go to the next one. You'll be surprised how much that's touching. That's, that's barely touching. Look at that. So this is a brand new chain. Never ever been ground. That's touching. So my advice is that's barely, look, that's not touching there. Now, the other thing is the wheels aren't perfect alignment too. You could have a slight bit of wheel wobble. So what I tend to do is hold the wheel in the same position and rock it backwards and forwards. See, it's touching there. So if you do that method like that and you find you might just spend a minute and find your shortest tooth. Now, if you find your shortest tooth, sometimes if it's only one or two teeth, I'm not even worried about grinding that one. I want to grind my longest tooth. So it's pretty easy to find the longest one because the wheel is going to touch. That's going to be my starting point. I'm going to start to grind that tooth and that chain all the way around. And if I've got a variation of, say, 0.2 of a millimetre, if I sort of set this to approximately 0.3 of a millimetre, it's going to grind off my short tooth and it's going to grind, obviously it'll grind the, the longest tooth, the high tooth, but it will grind the, the lowest length, the shortest tooth. Then I'll do the same on the other side. Set it up. It should be very close. You might have to have a minor adjustment. And I'll do the same thing. Find the shortest, find the, the highest tooth, and start grinding the highest tooth first. And hopefully you only take about 0.3 of a mil off. Once you've done that, it almost guarantees that the chain is really uniform left and right. And then all the other subs subsequent grindings should be equal. But if you just throw the chain on and just assume that it's exactly the same length, well, you know... You start adjusting it on the shortest tooth, you'll find out then you grind in the highest tooth. You're taking quite a lot off there. If I had a short tooth, like an example, I'm going to rattle off some of the, the figures. When I checked the new, brand new RS chain, I had 9.91 as the highest reading and 9.76. So I'm going to start grinding on the 9.91 and I don't care that if I barely touched it, like if it's 9.76, I don't care if I take 9.72. It may not be sharpened fully, but if it's one or two teeth, I'm not going to worry about it because on the next sharpening, they'll be sharpened properly. I'm just trying to set the chain up. So initially, I'm going to grind uniform because how can you grind uniform when you buy the chain brand new and it's not even equal sizes on the left and it's not even equal sizes on the right you've got variations up to 0.2 of a millimeter you're wasting your time getting a vernier because as i said if you looked at those pictures at the back of the tooth it's terrible and it's certainly not a good way to measure something when you've got a really rough finish like that so i typically use the grinding wheel as my reference to determine which tooth Obviously, if it's a short tooth, the wheel's going to spin freely. And if it's a, a larger tooth like that, it's barely touching, so that's a shorter tooth. And then I will set it up so that it, it's just touching on the high tooth. And I may have to do a further adjustment on the backstop uh, as I proceed grinding. But just bear that in mind that from brand new, from the manufacturer, that these are not a high tolerance piece of equipment, the, the chain. The grind is good. As I say, the grind is fine. And it brings me back to my next point about the backstop. Okay, so I just want to talk briefly about the backstop. Now, if you want to get fussy in particular about the tooth being even 
left and right. And if we have a look at this picture in the top left hand corner, we put that before. That's the uh, still chain that's in here now. And as you can see, it's deformed a little bit at the back because when it's stamped out and it's put into a pressing machine, the top plate is folded over and you get these little creases and you get these imperfections at the back of the tooth. So therefore, it's much better that the backstop comes in contact with the, the back of the, the tooth down the bottom. And this is the original backstop for the Steel USG. And we'll just zoom in there a little bit. So what I want to show you, what I did to modify it. So if you actually have a look at that, I think you can see that pretty good. That you'll notice it. It's making contact with the top of the tooth. And that's where a lot of the imperfections are. At the top of the tooth where it's folded over. So I don't like that type of backstop. What I did was make my own and it's got a much sharper angle. And you'll see that it doesn't touch the top. It touches the bottom first. I don't know if we can get in any actual closer or better than that to see that. So it's just, look, it's just interesting when people manufacture something. There it is there. Yeah, there it is. I think you can just see that little gap. You see that gap at the top. Ugh. So see how it touches down the bottom first? Down the bottom is where there's less imperfections on the tooth. Now you can, if you actually have a look, I'll just take this chain off. If you put this chain, you can see it really good like that there. Yeah, look at it there. You can see that really good. Eh? Now, the other thing is, if I put that chain, you can have the same problem on the Oregon type grinders, but probably not as bad. So we'll just actually have a look at that. So the backstop really needs to make sure that it's contacting the bottom of the tooth down at the bottom. We'll just get a tooth over here. And I think you can find out that this one's pretty good. And see how we we'll just wind this over a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. You can see how it touches the back of the tooth. And I don't know whether you could see the imperfect. You might even be able to see the imperfections there. You can see them there. Look. It's worse up the top. They're pretty bad imperfections. So. And down the base is where it's much better. Right up here where my fingernail is, this is the worst part. It gets the worst imperfections. And that's why I'm saying about measuring them. A lot of people, you'll actually watch the still video and the guy's got a digital say, oh, I'll measure your highest, or oh, your longest and your shortest tooth. And when you've got imperfections like this, you're going to get inaccurate readings. Even sometimes, have a look, it's not even... Sometimes the shape at the back is different from one tooth to the other. It's close, but it's certainly not perfect. There's a little bit of an imperfection. It's got a looks like it's got a bit of a curve on it. So there's definitely imperfections, but most of them are at the back. And those imperfections are going to cause you problems, especially on the USG grinder. But it can be easily resolved just by putting a different... Look, even if you, you take the original one, I'll just show you the difference in the angle. That's the difference in the angle. They're, they're roughly the same length, if you have a look. 
it's just that it's got a much larger angle on it so that it touches the bottom of the tooth. So you could grind that one off. Look, even if you went out and brought one, look, they're only probably about $10 or something. Go your steel dealer and tell them you want a new backstop. And you could experiment with it and grind it on an angle like that. Don't touch the front. Just grind all that part off like that. If you mark it with a texter and get an angle grinder with a cut-off wheel, you'll be able to cut that off and then just touch it up with the grinder on a grinding wheel so that it's uh, nice and smooth because I've got a good finish still on it. Look. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.